بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على المعروف رحمة العالمين نبينا وحبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد last uh, last week we dealt with the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ يَا قَوْمِ إِنَّكُمْ ذَرَمْتُمْ أَنفُسَكُمْ بِاتِّخَاذِكُمْ الْعِجْلَ فَتُوبُوا إِلَى بَارِئِكُمْ فَقُتِلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ عِنْدَ بَارِئِكُمْ فَتَابَ عَلَيْكُمْ إِنَّهُ هُوَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ Is that the place we stop, right? Okay. So we are still discussing the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the children of Israel and his blessings upon them. How much he has been uh, given them, and uh, he made them leaders, prophets, messengers. He got it, leaders of the community, uh, and he says, malam yuti ahadim min al And he has given them that which he did not give anyone before, before them. So all of these blessings they are supposed to be a motivating factor to motivate them to accept the religion of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala presented to them by the Prophet وسلم, which they already know and they understand that he is a real messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with no doubt. But unfortunately it never worked. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says with Qultum Ya Musa lan nu'min laka hatta nar Allah jahratan fa akhadat kum sa'iqatu wa antum tanzurun thumma ba'athnakum min ba'di mawtikum la'allakum tashkur. If you remember last week, I told you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he spoke to Musa alayhi salam in the, the Mount of Sina, Musa went back to his people and he told them about that which happened between him and his Lord. So they appreciated that and they told him, but we will not trust you until we also hear ourselves. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him to take from them somebody to represent the whole community to listen because we can't take everyone. Get it? Allah can do that, but no need. Some of them can go and hear the voice and then convey the message to others. So they went, uh, I'm sorry, Musa went to them and he selected from them 70 people. وَاخْتَارَ مُوسَى قَامَهُ سَبْعِينَ رَجُلًا لِمِيقَاتِنَا so he selected 70 people to represent the rest. Get it? So what happened was they heard the voice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Get it? They heard the voice of Allah. Instead of accepting in the way Musa accepted and believed, what did they say? We will never trust you until we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jahra. Jahra means openly. We won't see him in front of us. SubhanAllah. They requested that they want to talk, they want to hear the talk, right? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speak to them. He speaks to them, but then they said, No, we don't want that. We want to see him. Allah says, Allah says, You know that. He's talking to the, the, the children of Israel during the time of the Prophet. He told them, You already know this story. You know that it definitely happened. And this is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of that word. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, فَأَخَذَتْكُمُ السَّاعِقَةُ وَأَنْتُمْ تَنْظُرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed them all with the sa'iqa. The sa'iqa is the lightning and the thunder. All of them died. Nobody survived among them. So a shout comes and snatched them all. So Musa says, أَتُهْلِكُنَا بِمَا فَعَلَ السُّفَهَا مِنْ was requested from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to let them go back. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought them back. The Jews, they, they knew that. That it definitely happened. Allah said, ثُمَّ بَعَثْنَاكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَوْتِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ And we brought you back after your death so that you will be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The purpose is what? <coughs> to be thankful to Allah. Wallahi, when you're going through this, you will understand why Allah SWT says, وَمَا ظَلَمَهُمُ اللَّهُ وَلَكِنْ كَانُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ يَلْجِبُونَ Allah never wronged them. He never wronged them. He never oppressed them. But they oppressed themselves. 
because Allah does not need actually to take them to listen. Allah doesn't need them at all. But look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did. They said we have to hear. Allah says, no problem, take them. So then you will know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to show mercy, wants to protect, not to kill. But these are these people attitude, they do not appreciate that. To, even to have the permission to come and hear the voice, that's so great. Ubay ibn Ka'ab, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him, look, look at, he did not listen to the voice of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, recite Surah Al-Bayyina to one of your companions. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi I'm sorry, to Ubay ibn Ka'ab. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went to Ubay and he told him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded me to recite this surah for you. He says, Ya Rasulullah, wait a minute. Did Allah say obey? Or he just asked you to recite it to any one of the companions and you decided to choose me? He said, no, obey. He said, my name, obey. Allah says obey. Look at the feeling, look at the emotions. In it. He just wants to know that, yes, his name is mentioned by Allah. He says, Allah says, obey. He says, yes. He couldn't bear it, he cries. Out of happiness that his name is mentioned by Allah. These guys, Allah told them, come. They hear the voice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They hear the words. But that was not enough for them. A'udhu billah. So you can understand the basis of the destruction. I mean, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed them completely, you know why. They deserve more than that. But because of the request of the Prophet, Allah says, ثُمَّ بَعْثْنَاكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَوْتِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ We brought them back so that they will appreciate that. That would be a great lesson. They will know that Allah SWT loves them. Allah is not... I mean, He did not create them to punish them. Allah, He loves. He said, we brought you back so that you will be thankful. You will appreciate that which Allah SWT is doing and has been doing to you. So that's the favor. So I said, we're going to receive a lot of seed, I mean, series of blessings from Allah SWT to those people. And then you will see after every one of them, and you will see the way they reacted, whether it was negative or positive. And you will make the comparison to those who live in our own contemporary era. قَالَ وَظَلَّنَّا عَلَيْكُمُ الْغَمَامَ وَأَنزَلْنَّا عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَنَّ وَالسَّلْوَىٰ كُلُوا مِن طَيِّبَاتِ مَا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ وَمَا ظَلَمُونَا وَلَكِنْ كَانُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ يَظْلِمُونَ قال ابن, ابن كثير لما ذكر الله تعالى ما دفعه عنه من النقم شرع يذكر أيضا ما أسبغ عليهم من النعم قال وظلنا عليكم الغمامة وهو جمع الغمامة سمي بذلك لأنه يضم السماء أي يوارها ويسترها وهو السحاب الأبيض ذللوا به في التيه ليقيهم حر الشمس سبحان الله you know, what happened was, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when they requested, they said, we want to defend ourselves and we want to fight. Is there anyone who wants to fight? In this religion, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا تتمنوا لقاء العدو This is a message to be sent to anyone who says Islam is a religion of violence. Prophet told the companions, even when it comes to the defense, he said, La tatamanno liqa'ala adu. Don't you ever wish to meet your enemy. Always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala afiyah. Very good religion. Always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala peace. Don't you ever wish to meet your enemy. This will be the last result. The last thing you should go for to meet your enemy. But the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, do not wish that. But they asked for that. Get it? There was a time they told Musa they want that and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded them to go and fight a people. When they reached the place, they found those people being a very giant people. They requested, nobody asked them to do that. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, go do. When they reached the place, they found, mashallah, giant. They told Musa, you think we're going to fight these guys? Never. Subhanallah. You know what they told them? They said, 
إِنَّهَا هُنَا قَعِدُ Subhanallah. That's the peak of disrespect. They do not say, إِذْهَبْ أَنْتَ وَرَبُّنَا فَقَاتِلَا إِنَّا مَعْكُمَا مُقَاتِلُونَ They said, إِذْهَبْ أَنْتَ وَرَبُّكَ فَقَاتِلَا You go, you and your Lord. How about you? He's not your Lord. They said, you and your Lord and fight. We are here. We will never make a move. Subhanallah. Who, who requested the, the mission to, to be given to them? They asked for it. And look at the response. They said, you go, you and your Lord, to fight. It's a very long story. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned Surah Al-Ma'idah. At the end of the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let them get into something which is called in Arabic, a tea. A tea means confusion. Confusion means you can never trace your place. For instance, you are coming to UI. You get it? I'm just trying to bring the example closer to you to understand. You're coming to UI. Get it from uh, Idaman. That's the best place. So you're coming from Idaman to UI. You reach UI, you pass. When you reach uh, KLIA, oh, I'm supposed to go to UI. Come back again. Johobaru. I'm supposed to go to UI. Come back again. End up in Singapore. I'm so like that. You will never come back home. That's why you see the knowledgeable people amongst them, they will tell you, we the Jew, we have no place, no territory. Because of this tea that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed on them, they couldn't recognize the place back again. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala scattered them on earth. Why? Because of their attitude when they told Musa, إِذْهَبْ أَنْتَ وَرَبُّكَ فَقَاتِلَ إِنَّا هَاهُنَا قَعِدُ But you know, this is supposed to be a punishment, right? But still Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing His favor and love and mercy over them. How is that? He said, وَظَلَّنَّا عَلَيْكُمُ الْغَمَارَ Allah Akbar He said, you remember the time you are there always going around, you cannot come, you never come back home. They keep on going to this country, this country, they can never trace back their home. In the middle of what? The sun. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did with them, He bring down the clouds. They come next to their heads to cover them from the impact of the sun so that they would not get affected. Do you call that punishment or blessings? <laughs> this is a punishment, but still Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making this for them so that they will reflect. The whole issue is, the main objective is them to come back and accept their own prophet. Allah says, وَظَلَّنَّا عَلَيْكُمُ الْغَمَامَ وَأَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَنَّ وَالسَّلْوَى And he says, we, come, we brought down the, the clouds to cover you from the impact and the, the heat, the temperature of the sun. وَأَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَنَّ وَالسَّلْوَى They don't have a time to look for food, right? Look at the best way Allah SWT was dealing with them. When it comes to food, Allah is sending down food from the sky, from the, from the heavens. SubhanAllah. Some scholars said these are meat and some kinds of fruits. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been giving them. Al man is a kind of a fruit. Was salwa they said is a kind of a bird. Wallahu a'lam. But these are food ready made from the heavens. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is preparing that for them in order to survive. When they were supposed to be punished by Allah SWT, but this comes to them. All because Allah SWT wants them to reflect and to come back and recognize the Prophet who was sent to them. May Allah SWT guide us to the truth and let us see the truth in the way it is. Allah says, Allah told them, eat from the fresh fruit and the fruit that we have created and we have bestowed you Allah SWT told the Jew say, but that never caused them a reflection Allah says they never wrong us they never oppress us those activities those negative reaction those evil doings they will never I mean affect us at all Allah says they will bear the consequence of that by themselves. 
قال فخالفوا الله says كلوا من رزق ربكم واشكروا له الله سبحانه وتعالى told them you should eat from that which Allah سبحانه وتعالى bless you from فخالفوا وكفروا فظلموا أنفسهم هذا مع ما شاهده من الآيات البينات والمعجزات القاطعات and they did not accept they still insist to disbelieve in Allah سبحانه وتعالى with all of these blessings of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and add to that also they have been seeing from Musa a lot of signs معجزات things that they know these are from Allah سبحانه وتعالى to confirm the prophecy of Musa عليه السلام ومن ها هنا تبين فضيلة أصحاب محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and from here you will understand why the companions of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم are the best of the companions that Allah سبحانه وتعالى granted ever prophet I mean ever granted a prophet why those companions are the best so from here you will understand because Isa عليه الصلاة والسلام was somehow disappointed by his own disciples sometimes you get it Musa you can see they disappointed him many times and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam companion look, look at the reaction you get it during the uh, the, the, the battle of Badr one of them when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam realized that it's going to turn into a battle so he worries so much he worries so much because they did not prepare for that so he he told the, the companions, Ashiru ilayya. What do you think about that? So the Ansar told him that most likely you're worrying about that which we, we promised that we're going to protect you as long as you're in Medina. But we never uh, took an oath, the oath to protect you when you go out of Medina. And you worry about us. He said, no problem, do not worry about that. One of the believers told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you are to command us to go to Bark al Gamad, he said, We're going to penetrate that one. SubhanAllah, look at the way they give him comfort. He said, If you ask us to go to Bark al Gamad, our Gamad, he said, We will go to that. Somebody says, This place they are talking about is a place which is far, which is found in Yemen, between the place where the Prophet is located and this Bark al Gamad you have around 14 tribes each and every one of them is a real enemy of Islam what does that mean? he's trying to tell the Prophet Sallallahu if you are going to tell us go to Barq al Gamal, we're going to go there knowing that we're going to engage in 14 battles with those tribes before we reach that place they say we will go because you commanded Miqdad ibn Azwad or Miqdad ibn Amr he told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Ya Rasulullah, do not worry at all. He said, we will never tell you that which the Jew told Musa. Idhab anta rabbuka faqatila inna hauna qaidu. He said, we will never say to you that. But we will say to you, Idhab anta rabbuka faqatila inna ma'akuma muqatidun. Allahu Akbar. Look at the difference. The Jew told him, go on you and your Lord and fight. We will never go. Mekdad says, Ya Rasulullah, we will say to you, not like them, we will say, you go, you and your Lord, and fight, we're going to go with you and fight also. That's the reason why Ibn Kathir says, you can see how great were the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in terms of acceptance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And by Allah, they're the best to show to you how a person should be showing his allegiance to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Those people, they have no dunya in their mind. What they always think about is how to come closer to Allah SWT and please Him. So their personal interest, they keep them aside. As long as they contradict that which Allah SWT wants, they keep them aside. Their life is valueless when it comes to that which Allah SWT is pleased with. And we the Umar Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa the latter generation, if we want to succeed, we have to have this concept of سَمِعْنَا وَاطَعْنَا We listen and obey. You get an idea, listen and obey. We don't have situations like them. You get an idea? And that's a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They engage in battles and wars and all of these things. Alhamdulillah, we are living in what? In a state of peace. The religion reached us in a state of peace. And we have it. So if they were able to maintain their religion, we should be the one who are able to maintain their religion. 
If they are patient, we should be the one who is patient more than them because we have the peace. They don't have the peace. One of them, uh, one of the tabi'in, the students of the companions, he looked at uh, uh, a companion, Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman. He says, you guys were wrong. He said, what do you mean? He says, لو كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بيننا ما تركنا رجله تمس الأرض. He said, if the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is with us now, we will never let him walk on earth. We will always carry him. He was trying to tell the companions, you guys, you do not do the job, because he used to work, and you also just walk with him. So if it is us, we will never do that. Hudayfa well, look at him, understand that this, this guy doesn't know what, he, what he's talking about. He said, relax, relax, relax. He said, Wallahi, we reach a place, a situation whereby Allah SWT described that you guys were reading it in the Quran, we witnessed that. Allah says, well, this is the description of Allah. He said, وَبَلَغَتُ الْقُلُوبُ الْحَنَاجِرِ Imagine the heart moving from its position and its situ situated here. You can imagine how much fear this person is facing. Get it? Allah says, بَلَغَتُ الْقُلُوبُ الْحَنَاجِرِ وَزُلْزِلُوا زِلْزَالًا شَدِيدًا They were shook on earth. They thought, خلاص, they're going to be snatched by those congregations, the army that came to fight Medina. You get it? They were in a state of fear. They'd never been in that before. After that, it was too cold it's during the winter. Not only that, it's windy, like a hurricane. At that moment, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is telling them, مَنْ يَأْتِنِي بِخَبَرِ الْقَوْمِ وَلَهُ الْجَنَّةِ Who can go and get some information about what the Meccans are doing there? And I can guarantee him paradise. Nobody is moving. You know? Companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam something lower than that. If the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, who can do this? Even without reward, also they go. But imagine, Jannah is guaranteed for anyone who can make a move, but nobody is moving. And you guys are telling us that we didn't know how to deal with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, keep quiet. He said, we keep quiet. Abu Bakr is silent, Abu Bakr is silent, everyone is silent. It was night, it was cold, it was windy. And you're going to face how many people? 10,000 soldiers, well equipped. Who will say yes? So, Hudayfa says, I was just there. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam attached. He said, who is that? He said, I said, Hudayfa. <laughs> you wish you were there to hear how he said Hudayfa. Because he knows khalas. And then the Prophet said, Hudayfa, please go and check for us. Wallahi, look at his statement. He says, Wallahi. He said, Wallam ya kulli ta'atillahi wa ta'ati rasulihi buddun. He said, if I know, I can say to the Prophet, no. I will tell him, with all due respect, Ya Rasulullah, look for somebody else. But he, but he says, I know, I cannot say to Muhammad, no. That's a prescription from Allah. Because he is sent by Allah, how can, he tell, how can you tell him no? So when he says go, I told him yes. Then he moves. And look at the, the miracle. He said, I just moved out of the room. The cold was taken away from me completely. I just see people shivering. I don't know why are they shivering. The weather is okay. <laughs> he said, I moved. Until and look at look at the, look at the look at the way they, they, they take the command and they keep it in the way it is. Prophet said, "You go to the place, do not do anything. Your job just to go and monitor and come back to us." Does it? He went to the place. He was sitting down there, and it was night. And then he found out everyone is shivering and they have a big fire to give them some warmth. Do you get an idea? So everyone was there, and Hudayfa is like, why do you need fire here? He's okay. <laughs> he has his own natural jacket, right, and coat. So he was there waiting to see what exactly are they planning to do. And then he saw a very huge person, that's Abu Sufyan. And he was telling people, Halumbu, come, come, come. Everyone should come closer. He said, 
you guys you should know that regardless of our size Medina is very little amount of people and we came in, in thousands we're more than the inhabitant of the place but we couldn't do anything for more than 50 days that means most likely we're not going to face good and you can see what Allah subhanahu wa he did not say Allah but you can see what is happening to us because what Allah did he brought a strong wind the wind is taking their tents breaking it destroying their food like that they have to hold it here hold it there so he was telling people you guys you have to be very careful I don't think that is good here and everyone should take precaution you have to know exactly who is sitting next to you Uzaifah says like Inna lillahi wa now they will understand <laughs> but there is a stranger next to them but you know smartness is always with the Muslims unless if they remove the smartness you know what he did when he heard that he knows that it's going to be tragedy because if they mention his name ah this is one of them they will get him so what did he do he hit the one next to him he said who are you you know the guy is going to mention his name right he says i am so and so when he mentioned his name this guy the one who is here he thought he is talking to him so could ever hit the other one and say and you who are you he said i'm so and so so it's like they're talking to each other this is how and he managed to disguise himself and nobody knows about him you know what he says he said at that moment i was holding my my arrow you get it he said there was nothing between me and the leader of those army except just to shoot him he said i can kill him he said i was going to shoot because it's it is at night nobody can see he said i was going to shoot him and then i remember the prophet someone said do not do anything until you come back get it look at how allah's mortal plan because if he killed him khalas finish he will die as a non-muslim and go to hell but Allah wants that person to accept Islam. Afterward, the leader himself, he accepted the Prophet ﷺ during the conquest of Mecca. Do you know what Allah SWT plan? That's the reason why we believe that Allah SWT in all of his activity, activities, there is no coincidence. Everything is planned. Do you get an idea? Plan for him to get that. So the Prophet ﷺ told him, do not do anything until you come back to me. So if I went back, and look at the amazing things. He said, the moment I go to the Prophet Sallallahu I just reach him, I convey the message, the call, then the, that weather comes back to me. I said, hey, oh, Allah Musta doesn't know what to do. Now the mission has been accomplished, right? <laughs> so he said, I, was, I went to sleep, but I don't know how. It's too cold. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi came with his blanket and he put his garment and he put on me. So he started feeling the the warmth he's left until the end of the night the Prophet Sama came to wake him up and say come here no man or the one who sleeps wake up for the Fajr so these are the companions of the Prophet so we have a lot of examples like that get it we have to make sure that we follow the track Abu Huraira said Wakanu or the narrator says Wakanu ahrasa shay'in in al-khayr you will never see somebody who is hastening towards good and righteousness more than the companions of the Prophet the most merciful person amongst the human, mind, the human beings were the companions of Muhammad very dedicated people and they love good to everyone contrary to the people of this contemporary era May Allah SWT guide us to the truth so Allah SWT told the Jews he told them كُلُوا مِن طَيِّبَاتِ مَا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ وَمَا ظَلَمُونَ وَلَكِنْ كَانُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ يَظْلِمُونَ Allah says they did not oppress us but they were oppressing themselves the last ayah for today Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَإِذْ قُلْنَا الْخُلُوا هَذِهِ الْقَرْيَةَ فَكُلُوا مِنْهَا حَيْثِ شِئْتُمْ رَغَدَ وَادْخُلُوا الْبَابَ السُجَّدَ وَقُولُوا حِطَّةٌ نَغْفِلْ لَكُمْ خَطِي خَطَايَاكُمْ وَسَنَزِيدُ الْمُحْسِنِينَ فَبَدَّلَ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا قَوْلًا غَيْرًا الَّذِي قِيلَ لَهُمْ فَأَنزَلْنَا عَلَى الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا رِجْزًا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ بِمَا كَانُوا يَفْسُقُونَ This one might take a bit long of uh, commentary so I guess it's better to delay it until the next class inshallah next week uh, we will begin with this one بإذن الله تعالى بارك الله فيكم سبحانك اللهم وحمدك شهر الله لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك